Welcome to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And today, we're gonna to go into the story of Adolf Ruth with Hank Sheffer. But before we do that, I wanna read about uh, some of the other mysterious deaths that have happened up in those mountains over the years. And I'm just gonna read just, just the tip of the iceberg to you here. For example, in February 1951, Dr. John Burns, a physician from Oregon, was found shot to death on Superstition Mountain. That's the main mountain right there. The official ruling was that the death was accidental. In early 1952, a man named Joseph Kelly of Dayton, Ohio, was also searching for the lost mine. He vanished and was never seen again until his skeleton was discovered near Weaver's Needle two years later. The shot in his skull was ruled an accidental shooting. Go figure that one. In 1955, Charles Massey, who was hunting with a 22, this is important, he had a 22, was found shot between the eyes by a heavy caliber rifle bullet. He had a 22. He was shot between the eyes with a heavy caliber rifle bullet. The coroner ruled it an accidental death resulting from a ricochet. So somewhere between that 22 hitting the rock and hitting his head, it became a heavy caliber bullet. Magic! All right, and the very last one. January 1956, a man from Brooklyn, New York, reported to police that his brother Martin Zuolfo, who he believed was searching for the Lost Dutchman mine, had been missing for several weeks. A month after that, the missing man's body was found with a bullet hole above his right temple. Although his gun was found under the body, the death was ruled, can we all say it together? A suicide! Lots of suicides going up here under strange circumstances that would have made these people, they would have had to have been very talented to have committed suicide under these circumstances. And it goes on, the list goes on and on and on. But without a doubt, the most important to the whole mythos of this mountain is Adolf Ruth. And here's Hank Sheffer to tell you the story of old Adolf. Fortunes have been lost, but no fortunes have ever been found in the mountain in the search for the lost Dutchman gold. Some say that the majestic beauty and the tranquility of the region are the only treasures that man will find in the Superstition Mountains. The death of Adolf Ruth in 1931 opened up one of the most intriguing chapters in the history of the Superstition Wilderness, and it would be the one that would start up all the rumors and stories all over again. Adolf Ruth's skull was found on the east slope of Blacktop Mesa in a small tributary of Needle Canyon. The remainder of his body would not be found until many months later, over three quarters of a mile away. The press found reporting the circumstances surrounding Ruth's death even more appealing than the news of the depression. Now the question pops up, what was Ruth doing here in the first place? He didn't belong here. He was a city slicker. Well, the story actually began back in 1912 when his son, Erwin C. Ruth, was working as a cattle inspector for the U.S. Bureau of Animal Husbandry down in Mexico. He acquired some treasure maps from a military officer while he was there. The reason for this generous contribution to Irwin was the fact that he had saved the man's life and the lives of his family. Irwin Ruth wasn't much of a treasure hunter, but he knew his father was, so he saved those maps and they gave them to him. Now Adolf Ruth searching for gold did not start with the lost Dutchman's mine, no sir. It started with the lost peg leg mine over in what is known today as the Anzo Borrego Desert. It was in this desert in Southern California that Ruth fell and broke his hip and doggone near died. He spent now on to four days laying in that wash till he was finally rescued by his son. Irwin took his father to the hospital in San Diego where the old man was patched up. They had to put a silver plate in his hip to hold the old man together. 
Now, while recuperating, Ruth began to study those maps given to him by his son. In that assortment of old papers and maps from Mexico, he discovered what was later to become known as the Peralta Ruth maps. Now, after his recovery, Adolf Ruth began making plans to visit the Superstition Mountains to search for that lost Dutchman gold. But he wouldn't be until many years later, after his retirement in 1931, that he finally arrived in Arizona Territory. When he did, though, he immediately went over to Tex Barkley, the owner of the Quarter Circle U Ranch. On June 11th, he tried to persuade Tex to take him up into the mountain. But Tex said, no, sir, I won't do it. He said, you're old, you're in bad health. You'll probably die up on that rock if I take you there. However, Ruth persisted until Tex finally agreed to pack him in. However, Adolf Ruth would have to wait for his return from Phoenix in three or four days. Tex had business up there, cattle business in Phoenix. As fate would have it though, while Tex was gone, an impatient Ruth left the ranch with two itinerant cowboys by the name of Purnell and Keenan, who hung out around the ranch. A few days later, on June 18, Ruth met a man on the trail up in the mountain. The man said that Ruth was just fine the last time he'd seen him. Of course, he really didn't know who Ruth was, and he wouldn't know until some years later. On the 20th of June, Barclay rode into Ruth's camp. He knew that something was wrong, and he could tell that the site had not been occupied for at least two days. Barclay immediately notified the county authorities, both Maricopa and Pinal Sheriff's offices. The search for Ruth continued for over 45 days throughout June, July, and on into August, the hottest part of the year here in Arizona. Erwin Ruth soon arrived and once again organized a search for his father. He even offered a reward, just as he had done in San Diego 12 years earlier, all to no avail. Erwin believed to the day of his death in 1969 that his father had met with foul play up in the superstitions. He also believed that his father had been carrying maps that would lead him to the elusive lost Dutchman gold. Well, despite all the claims that Adolf Ruth had been murdered, there has never been an official statement to that effect. Both county sheriff's offices concluded that Ruth had died of natural causes, probably dehydration, starvation, and such. Of course, they don't say too much about them bullet holes that they found in his skull. Hmm. I guess they don't mean nothing about nothing there. I'm not real sure about that. Some folks believe that the elements are what cost Ruth his life. Most other folks simply believe he was murdered for his treasure maps. Even Tex Barkley had said that Ruth talked too much, was too free with the information about his maps. But the fact of the matter is that even if he ever did have maps, no one's ever come up with finding them. Few events in the history of this region have ever left such an impact as that of the Adolf Ruth case, the disappearance of the Peralta Ruth maps and his deadly search for the lost Dutchman gold. Now, I would like to interject some ponderment fodder for y'all. First off, we must remember at this point that we are talking about legends and stories that have somehow managed to survive despite the many embellishments and omissions that uh, such stories seem to require and endure along the way. Secondly, that said, many more facts have come to light over the years that can be attached to the Adolf Ruth story. And thirdly, it has always been interesting to me that the famous treasure is always referred to as the lost Dutchman's gold. Gotta say, I don't believe the Dutchman was ever lost. Now the gold, that's a different story, isn't it? Hey, listen, that's the story of Adolf Ruth. And as you can tell, there's a lot of mystery up in these superstition mountains. Now, there's one thing that we do know about the mysterious death of Adolf Ruth. Between the time that the two ranchers took him up there 
And the time that Tex Barkley went up there to his campsite and couldn't find him, he was gone, there was at least one person that saw him up in those mountains. Who was that one person? Where did he go? Was he ever questioned? These are mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.